Hey everybody, I'm Charlotte Cunningham. Thank you for joining us on winningruns.com. I'm standing here with PJ Berger of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. PJ has agreed to come on and show us all of her knowledge to get that winning run. PJ was born in Minnesota and she has now moved down to Oklahoma to escape the cold winters up there in Minnesota because really cold. Anyway, she's married to Joey Berger who is Mary's other son. We all know Todd Berger and we all know who Mary Berger is, a uh, world champion what, a couple years ago? Yeah, 06. 06. And what nice family they are. She's agreed to come down and share all of her knowledge. PJ got started when she was very young on horses, did mm. everything with horses, showed. Mm. She did horsemanship, every other class, and ran barrels. And when she got out of school, you didn't know what she really wanted to do. So right. she just started mm. training horses all around and mm. just kept coming back to barrel racing. He doesn't want to be on camera today, does he? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Anyway, uh, we oh. really appreciate her coming on today. Uh, PJ, you've seen her on the cover of the Barrel Racer News. She just won the summer shootout aboard Fancy Man Perks, and he belongs to, who does he belong to? Dan and Sue Rudy. Rudy, and very nice folks. Got to meet them. They're really nice. She's a Prairie Circuit qualifier for the WPRA. Uh, she was the reserve champion of the AQHA Senior Barrels. Um, she's had many other accomplishments, mm -hmm. and uh, we really appreciate PJ coming on. Uh, mm -hmm. She's going to talk about her everything that helps her m become a winner. Um, feed program, training program. We're going to talk about how she uses chiropractors, uh, what she uses on her leg gear, and how she takes care of her horses. PJ, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And now, tell us what this is before we start on your training. This is a three-year-old colt that me and my husband bought as a yearling. Mm -hmm. um, I sent him to Phil Hogan to break him as a two-year-old. We've gone on with him. He's actually a heel horse and he breakaways. Um, I've started him some on the burls and it's just... You uh, planning on trying to fatigue him for next year? Yeah, we're going to enter him up and just see how it goes. Okay. Well, let's talk about, I'll let you just take over and talk about your training program and just show us everything you need to know. Okay. I try to be just as quiet as I can with my hands. Um, when I ask, ask horses to move, I like to just slide my hand down and just pick up on them lightly and just have them follow their face. I don't like to snatch one. Um, unless I have to. You get in situations where you have to, but a lot of times if you can ask a horse, they'll do it. Um, I start out walking lots of small circles, just 10 foot around, um, you know, and it can be around a barrel or just in an area in the arena. Um, I get to doing this and then move up to a trot. Easy. But I'd like to keep keep their nose tipped in. I'm getting their, keeping their shoulders up, pushing their hip in. Um, easy. Hey, trot. Eventually, when I've had them long enough, I'll lope them small circles, but, uh, I tend to watch their ears quite a bit. Um, when a horse is listening to you, he'll have his inside ear back to you like that. He's listening. Um, the second he goes to not listen, his ears will go forward like that and he'll flatten out for a second. Um, he loses his roundness, but when he comes back, I just lightly pick up on my inside rein to bump him back. Um, and then when they're finally relaxed, you know, and they're showing you that they're paying attention with their ear, I'll bring them into a little bit smaller circle, just with more pressure on the inside rein. My outside rein is just laying there on his neck. But I'll bring him in and make him step over and then walk off. Um, I do the same thing going both directions. Now that we talked about your circles, uh -huh. you often use straight lines 
to you, you know, incorporating in your training program. Why do you use straight lines? And you're going to show us some of that. So tell me why. Well, I use it. Have you ever been on the colt that, you know, the first time you go to exhibition them, and they're zigzagging and they can't <laughs> oh, yeah. stay between the lines right. and, or between your reins? I start that earlier, hoping that they don't. It's easier to steer them. Uh huh. Um, and I just go about teaching them, find a spot on the rail on this side, find a spot on the rail on that side, and just zigzag all over the arena. Mm -hmm. um, if they lean on you, I just stop. I turn them away from the way they're wanting to go. If they're wanting to go this way, we go that way. And then pretty soon they get where they're just following your hand. When you pick up, and we're going to go this way, we'll go that way, or we just stay straight. Staying straight is easier than leaning on you because that's right. Work. So if they lean on you, you take them the opposite way. Is that to help them pay attention more to you and focus on you and then what they're focused on? Yes. Okay. Um, well, go ahead and show us some of this um, straight lines and just okay. explain it to our viewers. And I mean, it, it's not that hard. It works into a pattern really easy, but I'll just usually start at a uh, walk, but I end up in a trot or a lope. Um, and I'll just pick a spot all the way across the arena um, and just keep them real light between the reins. Uh, he's going to spook at these banners, but whoa. And I'll stop, I'll spin them around, and I'll go the opposite direction. Whoa. So he's wanting to lean on me to the left, I'm going to take him to the right. Um, and we'll come up here to this fence and just keep my reins real easy Whoa. and loose. And like he wants to stop and stand and he went straight, um, I'm going to leave it at that. And then I'll walk him forward, turn him around and find another spot to go to. Ooh. He's leaning on me there. I'm going to spin him around that way. Um, he's happy now because he's going to see his buddies, but. Whoa. And I'll do the same thing at a lope, just getting them just to stay real light between your reins. Whoa. Whoa. He's a little fresh, but that's all right. And this exercise just gets them going ooh, a lot more free as far as when you turn a burrow and have to go across the pen. In a big pen like this, there's a lot of places they could go right, left, right, left and get you out of kilter. So ooh, that's just an exercise I do in my daily program. And Hey everybody, I just want to tell PJ Berger and her new little help here, Kaden, her daughter, this is the next generation of barrel racers right here that we'll have on winning runs in 20 years that'll be winning. Yeah. <laughs> PJ, thank you for sharing all your wonderful knowledge with us. And uh, I think somebody's ready to go back to the trailer, aren't you? You ready to go bye-bye? Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Say bye-bye. Can you wave? Take him. Come on, let's go. You can go tell me how you run barrels. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> what sound does a horse make? <laughs> <laughs> All right.